kick off uh, with Arsenal because, of course, they signed Ben White for £50 million from Brighton. Um, I wonder how happy Arsenal fans are about this because Ben White, before the Euros, um, kind of went under the radar. One of those players that you just don't really... He quietly goes about his business, but anybody who, that had seen him when he was on loan from Brighton uh, to Leeds a couple of seasons ago will have been impressed with him. Everybody speaks incredibly highly about him. What was your initial reaction, Perry, when, when that signing was announced? I, I thought it was a statement of intent, um, and I think maybe... There's a few clubs, Arsenal being one included, where the owners are spending money now where maybe they wouldn't have spent the money before we had the um, European Super League debacle. You know, mm. we had the fan, quite rightly had the massive fan backlash. You know, that doesn't work in our country. It's a meritocracy here. We don't do, you, you know, you just ring fence yourselves. Yeah. Not going to happen. So I think there's a lot of few clubs who are obviously trying to get the uh, fans back in favour. And with the Ben White uh, transfer, the thing I like about... I saw him play, you mentioned, when he was on loan at Leeds. Mm. And I was, I was lucky enough to see him play in the championship. And he, he looked very compact. He played as centre-half. Then he could play as a holding midfield player. He's played as a right-back. But centre-half is his, like, main position. His bread and butter. Exactly, yeah. And so I saw him play in the championship, along with Calvin Phillips. I thought, they are, these are two outstanding players. Then you think, can he make the step up? And then I saw him play at the Emirates for Leeds in the FA Cup. And he played, again, as a... Uh, a little bit as a centre half, then he went into holding midfield. And Leeds were outstanding. They should have been three or four. No, we end up winning the, the game in the end, but yeah. Leeds should have been three or four up in the first like 25, 30 minutes. Yeah. And it, it didn't phase him. It was 60,000. They had 9,000 Leeds fans there creating a brilliant atmosphere. So that is like a big game. And he just breezed through it. He breezed through it uh, tactically, he breezed through it positionally, he breezed through it uh, technically on the ball. He was very, very good, very comfortable, very composed. And you think, right. Now can you make the step up into the Premier League? And looking at his um, his career, but I like players that are younger who have gone on loan into the Championship. So he's been League Two, Newport, League One, Peterborough, then the Championship leads, then proving himself in the Premier League. So every standard he's had to step up to, he's he's breezed it. And it makes I, you a complete player in yes, in that case because you've learnt your trade. And exactly. He's twenty three. I actually think he has the potential to be as good, if not better, than John Stones and Harry Maguire in, in a couple of seasons' time. Not straight away, in a couple of seasons' time. And if Arsenal aren't the top club, then he could go on like to a, uh, a a massive foreign club even. You're not making a statement like that and me not revisiting in it. Then with me a minute because we've got a goal update in Hearts versus Celtic uh, on week one of the Scottish Premiership with Talk Sports Graham Courtney. Yeah, and I tell you, it's Hearts 1, Celtic nil. Gary Mackay-Stevens scoring against his former club as well. And you know what? It's the usual story. Certain players, right place, right time. The ball has been fired in from the Hearts' right flank. And there he was, just to stab it in from really, really close range. Lively start by Hearts. They've flown out the blocks. And I tell you what, the referee, Bobby Madley, he's got his hands full as well. But uh, Gary Mackay-Stevens with the opening goal of this game. We've got uh, 11 minutes on the clock at Tynecastle. Hearts 1, Celtic nil. Oh, not a great week for Celtic has it been at all no I said during the week after loss against Midland that I thought they would probably be a very good league one team wow. and I got quite a bit of stick from Celtic Fair. fans <laughs> but um, uh, we're looking at Celtic at the moment it's not a great start going one nil down at Hearts this early certainly um, isn't certainly Mr. isn't we'll be back Foster Coglu will know that he's got a, like a huge job on his hands if he didn't before he does after this I was going to say I think, I think he knew that before didn't he yeah. blimey um, anyway we'll be back with Graham Courtney uh, throughout the show to find out how the rest of that game goes um, but the statement that Perry Groves has just made which was Ben White will eventually be better than no I said potential to be potential okay potential. well done it's all about semantics exactly, isn't it very yes. clever <laughs> um, potential to be as good if not better than Harry Maguire and John Stones. Yeah. What's the reasoning behind that? For, um, from when I've seen him play live, um, he's more mobile than Harry Maguire. I think mm. Harry Maguire is an excellent player, but everybody knows that Harry Maguire is not the quickest. He needs and someone quicker beside, beside him. him. And mm. sometimes his turning circle isn't particularly great when he's 1v1. Mm -hmm. And he's very. John Stones defensively has got a lot better this season. Uh, Man City's defence record was outstanding, wasn't it, last season? And yeah. he's not making so many mistakes. But John Stones' biggest. Um, uh, plus point is that he's very good on the ball. Yeah. So I've seen Ben White. He's excellent on the ball. He's come up with Graham Potter, obviously at Brighton, likes to play out from the back. He's played in different positions. So that's why I think he has the potential if he gets the right coaching, 
you know, I think Arsenal play with a back four, whether it's uh, Pablo Mari, will probably be left side because he's left footed. Mm -hmm. And he, he looks like he takes information on board. You, you've seen him. What was he like with England as a character? Because you, you spent a lot of time, obviously, with the England camp. Um, in the Euros, and what, how did you see him fit in? With because that was another big step up for him. He slotted in seamlessly. Um, bearing in mind it was all very last minute with with Trent Alexander Arnold's injury, um, everything that was going on with Jordan Henderson and the needing a little bit of defensive midfield cover as well. Obviously, as you said, he's versatile. He covers that position well. Harry Maguire, we didn't know whether or not he was going to be fit enough, so it made sense for Gareth Southgate to select him in the final twenty three. Um, he literally looked as if he belonged there and had been part of that group for years. Um, he's the most laid back, cool, calm customer that I've interviewed in a long time to the point where you almost want to poke him a little bit with a stick and say, you're right there, Ben. Yeah. He just doesn't get Very that. Very chilled. Yeah. Not, I mean, I've heard players talk about this before, Harry Kane in particular. Don't get too high, don't get too low. Yeah. And he's exactly that steady kind of character to the point where we were talking um, off air, weren't we, about his potential credentials as a captain in the future. Um, and certainly when I spoke to him, he was very mature, very down to earth, excited to be there, but not giddy pants about it. Just thinking, wow, what can I learn from this experience? Um, by all accounts, I was reading an article the other day that I found very interesting that uh, Mikel Arteta had actually asked Bukayo Saka a 19-year-old, what Ben White was like to work with in the England camp and, and almost get, not quite a scouting report, but, you know, what's he like in training? What's his, what's his temperament like? Yeah. And we know what Gareth Southgate does as England manager. He wants a certain type of, of player and a temperament that's going to fit in and not upset anything. And Ben White is exactly that kind of character. By all accounts, the reports were coming back very good. So from a personal point of view, you know, and it's, it's difficult judging a player when you're interviewing them one-on-one -on -one because it's, a, it's an alien situation, mm -hmm. isn't it, for, for them. And, and they're, and they're, they're on their guard as a little bit a as little well, bit, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, but definitely within the England camp, many of those players, it didn't feel like they, were, they had their guard up. And he certainly didn't. You know, I, I kind of mentioned to him about Arsenal without asking him directly because yeah. that's just rude and he's also not going to answer me the question. But talking about the fact that he's now being linked with clubs like like Arsenal um and he was just really like cool about it it's like well you know great it's really flattering if that if that's the case but he wasn't getting that ex overawed. over overall yes. exactly yeah. and I was really impressed by that the thing is what they do a lot now obviously you go and do your scouting you have all your analytics don't you with the, the, the different stats that you go through um but you need to get a, like a, a player profile on the psychological side and it makes sense for Arteta to ask Saka because he's working with him yeah. day in, day out. You know, what is he like as a character? It might and make sense, promotion. but there'll be plenty of managers that have got too much of an ego to yes. to actually want to ask yeah. somebody. And obviously um, Saka would have gone back and been glowing about Ben White. So that would have just even... Arsenal were probably a long way down the road to sign him anyway, but that just confirms what you hope you're, um, is the case. And as I said before, we, you say he's very grounded. I think he benefits, he's benefited from his loan periods. Mm. If you look at the England squad as a whole, there's a lot of those players that have learnt their trade in the lower leagues. Makes you a bit more humble. Yes, and what it is, it, it makes you go and play real football. Yeah. where You're un, you're still under pressure because uh, players in that uh, division are playing for their livelihoods, you're playing in front of crowds, you'll learn stuff that you're not going to learn in the under-18s and 23s, just the little nuances and the, mm. the little sly bits, you know, with old null pros that are going to test you. Well done so, for not using the right phrase that I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So we said Newport, League Two, breeze that. And that was a, that Newport likes to play, but it's not an easy pitch to play on, is it, at Rodney Parade either? <laughs> no. and, and it's more obviously more physical. Then you go the step up, then is to Peterborough, who obviously very good League One side and do like to play expansive football. So that's another uh, test. Then going to... Leads on loan, the way that Bielsa... Again, that's another test for you tactically mm. because Bielsa wants his teams to play like no other team plays in the Premier League. And the fitness that he would have got under exactly. Bielsa He'd probably takes find you the, to a whole other level. Yeah, and you probably find the training a little bit easier at Arsenal than did under <laughs> Bielsa. You go, what's the matter of this? This is, this is quite relaxing. So, And I like the fact um, about his temperament because obviously Arsenal is... We're not very good on the pitch at the moment. Mm. Um, and we're decidedly average, but Arsenal is still a massive football club where you're judged, we talked about it off air, where you're judged at a different level. You know, if you're centre forward and you go to 
Arsenal, you don't score for any one of the big six clubs. You don't score for two mm. or three games. It's national news. If you don't score for two or three games for Brighton or even like Jamie Vardy at Leicester, I think last season you went nine, ten games. It was, oh, by the way, Jamie Vardy hadn't scored for nine, ten games. You're playing for one of the big boys. That is national news. That's back page news. So he'll be judged on a different level. And it just seems like that he's taken that all levels in his stride. And you, you don't get more of a test than going into playing for England in the Euros at home and you're the, sort of the outsider and fitting in and not being phased by it. So that just sort of backs up what I thought about his mentality and I explained about, you know, his, his different qualities he had. I'm not saying he is now, I'm saying, but he has the potential to be... You could be looking back, if it goes well, thinking that 50 million quid. It was, that a was, that was a Yeah, yeah, that, that was like money well spent in two or three years' time.